Hey, Corridor, Ren here, and today I've got something a little different in mind that I want you to help me with. I have right here a classic 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper. It's about 0.1 millimeters thick, really thin. If I was to take this sheet of paper and double it, so I got two sheets of paper. If I was to double this again, I'd have four sheets of paper. So if I was to double this sheet of paper a hundred times, how thick do you think that stack of paper would be? Don't use calculators, don't use Google, just do an honest guess with your head. Don't even need to leave a comment, because we're going to talk about this here in a little bit. Today, lenses. Now to you filmmakers out there, a lot of this is going to seem like basic information, but for everyone else, there's intricacies to lenses and how they're used, and we thought you might enjoy learning a little bit more about that. The first thing to remember is that lenses are tools, and just like any tool, there's a right one for the job. When I first started working here, I had no idea what those differences were, and I'd like to share some of the things I've learned with you. The first distinguishing factor of any lens is its focal length. The length of a lens itself is determined by a process of magnification where the shorter the length, the lower the magnification, and the greater the field of view. Now, the longer the focal length, the greater the magnification, and the tighter the field of view. For example, a 24 millimeter lens is going to give me a very wide field of view, which means I'll be able to capture almost this entire room. However, a 200 millimeter lens is gonna give me a very narrow field of view, which means I can focus on something particular in the room. Thickness of paper times two to the power of 100. Do you think that stack of paper will be like this thick? Or do you think it'll be like a big stack? Or do you think it might even be like as tall as like this room? That's pretty tall. A 10, 10 to 15 feet probably is what I was gonna eventually get to. I don't know, probably like three of these buildings. I'm gonna guess 90 feet. 200, 200 feet. Right 200 feet, okay. It's probably like a freaking the, the distance of the state of Texas or something outrageous. That is pretty dang outrageous. I'm doing the math. 500 meters? 500 meters? Yeah. Okay. So to put that in perspective, that's about half the height of the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. Okay. That's my guess. That's your guess. That is probably the closest guess we've had yet. Oh, thanks. Yes. <laughs> the next thing to consider is whether you want a prime lens or a zoom lens. This is a 24 millimeter prime lens, which means that it only has one focal length. So if I want to get closer to a subject, I need to move the camera. This is a zoom lens 70 to 200 which gives me variable focal length. If I want to get closer to a subject, I don't necessarily need to move my camera using this lens. I can just punch in and it feels like I'm closer to the subject without having to move the camera. Now there are pros and cons to each of these lenses. With a prime lens, you're going to have generally less glass inside of it, which is going to give you more light. It's going to allow you to have crispier image quality. The only problem is it's got a lot less versatility in a run and gun situation. Whereas with a variable lens, you're going to get that versatility, but you're going to lose a little bit of that crispy sensitivity in low light situations. It's important to keep in mind that most high-end professional photographers are going to be using prime lenses because cost is no issue and they get really, really nice, crisp image quality. However, for indie filmmakers like us, we often go with zoom lenses simply because of their versatility. Instead of carrying around a case of five or six lenses, we can carry around one or maybe two zoom lenses. Taller. Taller? Uh, Burj Khalifa. Here's a hint. How far into outer space will it go? Oh my god. Not only would this stack of paper go across Texas twice, uh -huh. not only would it go to the sun and back. What? This, this if, is if, if we're doubling gonna... it how many times? 100. Holy crap. What the heck is this question come from? Where is this? <laughs> if you were to double that sheet of paper 100 times, by the time you get to 100, it is 13.5 billion light years. I said 500 meters, man. I look like. <laughs> what? It, it would wrap around the Milky Way galaxy. <laughs> That's not. What? It would wrap around the Milky Way galaxy 53,000 times. What? All the way the galaxy. That stack of paper is so thick, it's measured in billions of light years. I don't believe this. <laughs> You, you, you take a step, wait, how, how, how many times do you fold it? You can't, no, you can't, you can't fold it. So how thick is it? Oh, a piece, a piece of paper is 0.1 millimeters thick. So 0.1 millimeters times 100 is what, point? No, 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 it's not times 100. It's 0.1 millimeters times 2 to the power of 100. 
The next thing to know about lenses is that there are photography lenses and cinema lenses. Photography lenses, they're cheap, replaceable, and they have auto functionality such as autofocus and auto exposure, which are compatible with your average photography camera. This 24 to 70 millimeter photography lens we use a lot around here. It's got an autofocus setting, and as you can tell, it's meant to be used by hand with rubber grips for your focal length and your focus ring. Now let's contrast that with a cinema zoom lens. This here is our Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter cinema lens. As you can see, it's got total manual controls, including this ring on the bottom here, which allows you to manually control your aperture or however much light your lens lets into the camera sensor. Now on photography lenses, this is something that has to be done in camera settings, but on a cinema lens such as this, I can just control it by hand on the outside of my lens. Pretty cool. You'll also notice that on each ring, on focus, focal length, and on my T-stop, my aperture, there are these geared rings. This is to allow for hooking up what's called follow focus. This is very, very convenient for the camera operators because it allows them to simply turn a dial and adjust each of these individually, not having to do them by hand like we saw on the photography lens. As we saw on the photography lens, it was made out of hard plastic, but on these cinema lenses, it's made out of durable metal. This is gonna protect this expensive lens from the ruggedness of a film set and allow it to last for years. Lately on Corridor, we've been filming almost everything using these two Sigma cinema lenses. Now with just an 18 to 35 and a 50 to 100, we get almost every focal length that we need, which means we only need two lenses to run and gun. They're super compatible with our RED, and they're a great compromise between quality and price, which is something that's very hard to find in the world of expensive cinema lenses. 0 0.1 millimeters times two to the power of 100. And now this is in millimeters. Why is it two to the power of 100? A piece of paper, okay? This piece of paper, that's 0.1 millimeters thick. All you told me was that it was 100 of those stacked together no, no, no. times 100. 100 doublings. 100 doublings, so this is one double. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so and all the, I do is do that 100 times. But you're not you're not folding the paper. You let's say, okay, you end up so you double it, you get two pieces of paper. So double I do it, it again, once. you have four pieces of paper. So that's so that's one double. Yes. So now there's 99 to go. Yes. Of this. Yes. Go. Only 99 more of these, and all of a sudden I'm wrapping around. Double it. The double Milky Way it. Let me double, double that. Look, now you have four. Now you're already here. at four. After 10 doublings, it is four inches. Yeah. After 20 doublings, you're at 320 feet. For that stack of paper to go past the moon, you only have to double it 42 times. 42 doublings get you to the moon. Is that easy, guys? It would take 843 trillion years Jesus. To, to, you know, go along the length of that stack of paper. That is... The Earth hasn't even been around that long. The universe hasn't even been around that long. Wow. That's really, really, really far. That's, yeah. And so the reason why I looked this up is because our brains cannot even, our brains cannot physically comprehend okay. what two to the power of 100 is. Yeah, clearly we can. <laughs> but I only have one more question. What's that? What happens if it's carbon fiber paper? Einstein even That's said all you have to do. black holes are made of carbon fiber. All That's you where you do, find it. All you have to do to, 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 to create a wormhole is you take carbon fiber and you go like this, and it creates a, a warp in the time-space continuum they, and you step through to the other side. Wait, Jake, they get carbon fiber out of wormholes. Is that where it comes from? <laughs> yeah. Here's what happened. The Gorski winds came in strong yesterday and we have, we have two days to prep for a video. You ready? If you haven't checked out our previous videos, we tested out some new microphones. We wrapped our YouTube Red Show Lifeline. Check it out by clicking on the screen. If you've already seen them, watch them again.